Yo, 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 this is King Earner coming to you guys live and direct. I couldn't go live on my page. I couldn't go live on Instagram. But at the end of the day, I was able to carry it with some honor. Tonight, we got Sean Weston up here. Sean, I want you to come on in, you know. Hit the request button. I'm going to let you in, bro. You got to request yourself. Bow. There you go. There you go. There we go, brother. Bow yeah, you can, Ronaldo, you. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now, listen, man. We got, got some it. things going on where we got individuals that's putting you in a tight situation. Your thing is, listen, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm not into nothing negative. I'm out being more. I'm carrying my honor correctly. But these dudes want to put you in a position where your back is against the wall, and you're like, oh, my back against the wall. But look, I'm taking a fifth. I'm an innocent individual, and I want the people to really understand who you is because they don't understand who you is. So I want who you are from the beginning, what's going on, why is going on, and what position you want to take. Okay. First and foremost, I want to introduce everybody to myself. My name is Sean West, and I go by Sean West. Some people call me OG. All right. Located here in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, this situation came down on me about almost four years. It happened uh, 2019, okay. 2019. I'm sorry, 2019, 2019, all right, July 2019, in which when the police came into my house and just caught me by surprise, they hauled me off to the federal, federal uh, jail. Unknown to me, I was charged with owning another man's store, okay? Okay. Now, I own a business myself, which is called the Northwest Variety, okay? Most people here in Baltimore that, you know, know me know I own my store that's located on North Avenue. I was charged with a store located in another part of town by the feds, pretty much, that snatched me up and right. charged pretty me much with owning the store. Had nothing to do with the store. They pretty much, right, pretty much kidnapped me. I owned, a I owned a business next door to that business called the Stone Pit Bar and Grill. Now, this case is a case that consists mm -hmm. of 21 individuals, okay? Out of these 21 individuals, they placed me with one individual. Mm -hmm. And I was placed with this individual due to one mm -hmm. phone call made to my phone. One phone call that was made to me, in which that phone call was recorded, in which I did nothing illegal, nothing nefarious, nothing at all. Never sold this man nothing. Never, I didn't even know what the man was talking about. Actually, I have the actual conversation in the probable cause that they gave me. Okay? And then that probable cause, they have this man calling me and when he called me i had no clue what he was talking about but here's the problem all right we're talking about corrupt federal dea agents that conspired in order to have, mm -hmm. have me falsely in prison now they call this went as if this individual called me hung up immediately Okay, As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to read it real it quick. Old, it's not long. Good. It's real quick. Just get people, you know, understand exactly what's going on. Okay? Now, they said uh, on or about January the 20, January the 2nd, 2019, Honorable Kathleen Brick, Blake, a United States District Judge of Maryland, authorized the interception of communications occurring over Telephone number 443977. We ain't got to go through all that. A target telephone three. They listed it as target telephone three. And this phone was owned by a man named Ronald McCormick. Okay? Now, they said he received a call from a telephone number owned by right. this gentleman named Robert Jones. All right? They said that the brother Robert Jones asked him for specific 
items that he needed. They say he immediately hung up, immediately hung up and called me to try to obtain these items for me. All right. Again, I have a call log that shows that the man did not hang up and immediately call me. All right. He called this other individual that goes by the name of Cornelius Curl, AKA Turk the Rat, okay, as I call it. All right. They have it documented right here that the man immediately hung up and called this man. The man knew exactly what the fuck he was talking about, okay? He told the man that he didn't have enough of these things to provide him with, and he was going to mm. call him right back. But for some reason, his brother hung up from this mm -hmm. individual and immediately called me. Again, like I said, I had no clue what the man was talking about. When he called me, it went like this. What's up, Bump? McCormick replied, cooling. You down at the store? Western stated, no. Nah, I'm just coming from Pennsylvania. But I'm on my way down there, though. Wow, what's going on? McCormick stated, nothing. I just wanted to see if you had a box real. Western asked, a box? McCormick uh, replied, yeah. Western asked, what kind of box? McCormick stated, uh, you know, a box, a black box. Western stated, box, box, black box, box stated, I don't know what, what you mean by block. Western stated, oh, a block? He, he said, uh, a box, black box? Western stated, box, box, black box. McCormick stated, no, I said a black box. <laughs> anyway, Western stated, oh, a block, box? McCormick replied, yeah. Western asked, what the fuck is a box? That's what I said. Right, right, right. I had no clue what, what the man was talking about. All right, what the fuck? This is in the paperwork right here. I stated, what the fuck is a box? Block box. I'm lost right now. McCormick stated, yo, yo, the blocks, yo. The blocks. Western reply, oh, oh, a case? McCormick said, yeah. Western stated, oh, you talking about you trying to get a case? Oh, no, I don't have a case. Why didn't you, you just say case, nigga? Now, what the man is asking for is right. nothing illegal. Now, I wonder why the fuck is you trying to change all this and talk? But anyway, no. Why, did you just, why didn't you just say case? McCormick started laughing. He started laughing and said, oh, my bad. I just said box. I meant to say box, but my bad. Weston replied, I don't know what the fuck you talking about, <laughs> a box. So they said, based on above phone calls, I believe that Jones wanted to obtain the <clears> card <throat> of cutting agents. Exactly. They said that this man wanted to get cutting agents from this man. I had no clue what he was talking about. Again, when I say I had the actual phone call list, I had the phone call list of how the phone calls went from the wiretap. I got a, I ended up getting a terabyte from my attorney. You know, two and a half years later, it took me over two years to get the discovery for this case. Now, I'm, I'm certain, brothers, you're a little familiar with how this situation go. You get locked up, you meet with your attorney, you go over to the right. discovery, see what they're supposed to have. These people lock me up, haul me off down to the Supermax right. Federal uh, Jail. From there, they took me down to Washington, D.C., straight out of Baltimore. They took me out of Baltimore, took me to Washington, D.C. I'd never seen no discovery. I never saw what I was being charged with. It took two fucking years, five lawyers, before I found mm -hmm. out what the fucking charges was. I stayed locked up for a year before they released me due to COVID. Thank God COVID kicked in because I was still being jailed. But anyway, they ended up releasing me. I ended up getting a discovery after the fifth lawyer that I fired because nobody would give me discovery. And that's when I found out exactly what took place. When I say it took place, brother, all right? 
I got niggas play agreements. Got niggas play agreements in which right. the nigga on the phone that called me, the brother on the phone that called me, claiming that he wanted the box. The fans know exactly who supplied this man with it. Again, like I said, it's it's all right there. They names is right there. Canadian's curl is spelled out right there. It's no way they're gonna take the time to spell this man's name out a mm. hundred and eighteen times. And they didn't. And he isn't ass. arrested, he isn't indicted or anything. This nigga never got arrested. I'm talking about the nigga that provided these items to the man. They got the actual phone call in which the man provided these items to him. As a matter of fact, okay, let's go. I'm going to read it off for you. All right. This phone call, the probable cause phone call took place on January the 22nd. Right. They said 8 o'clock. All right. They said that I provided the man with these items. But I got a phone call made to Mr. Curl the very next morning. All right? It's saying the probable cause that I supplied it to him the next morning. But listen, the call took place at 11.38 AM. McCormick asked if unidentified male ever made that shit possible, CDS. Unidentified male said, yeah, that McCormick mm -hmm. Gucci, that it was up there. McCormick say, all right, say no more. See that nigga name right there, say Cornelius Curl. I don't know if you can if you can see it or not, but it's saying well, Cornelius Curl. You know what right? you know what bothers me is, is the honor in you. When you reached out to me, we, we talked and you said to me, listen, man, because the government they're tricky. And, and their thing, they want to make sure they're oh, witnesses, yeah. they want to make sure they see eyes, they want to make sure everybody is safe. I allowed you to know from the beginning, you said to me, hey, earn up. I'm not looking to harm anybody. I'm mm -hmm. not looking to bring no negativity mm -hmm. to anybody. I'm looking to have my name clear because I'm an individual who received a phone call, and this phone call, it bothered me from the beginning. It just tore you up. The way you was talking from to the me, beginning. I see it in your face. You said, Erna, I, 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 I was confused of why the phone call was coming in, but I never, ever, ever admitted to or asked or agreed to any type of negative narcotic agent or anything that has to do with cut. So I don't know why I'm in this position. They're charging me with something that has mm -hmm. something to do with an individual store that I have nothing to do with. I have a store right Next. next and I've seen this many a times where an individual, right, he does things that are negative, and when the government comes, they says, what door did you come out of? And this individual, or whoever it is, or these individuals, they'll make up lies to save themselves over and over. Now, when he called the individual that he called from the jump, when he called that person, right, couldn't get what he wanted. So he said, you know what I'm going to do? And the government allowed him to do? Let me call one more person and set him up. And this is what the stop recycling well, hold was up. coming to play. Now go ahead and give it to us, bro. Let me, let me, let me stop you for a second, Adam. All right, let me stop you for a second, brother. It's not that, you know, they know I never supplied the man with anything. It's not that he couldn't get what he wanted. The brother told him he's going to call him right back. It's right here. It's right here. The brother told him he's going to call him back. He called the nigga before and after he talked to me. But the fed said the man hung up immediately from the nigga he was trying to get the shit from and called that me. Way. That didn't happen that way. It never happened that way. Again, this nigga was never charged. He owned the store. Oh, it's his name. These niggas' name is right there on the business license. They, they got 118 times they recorded this nigga name with him selling everything mm. they claim I sold. I never 
don't show nobody nothing. I mean, not one phone call. It's one phone call that ties me to this whole case. I want you to think about this, brother. This happened January the 22nd of 2019. They didn't come to my goddamn door until July the 17th, seven months later, for one fucking phone call made in which I never provided nobody with anything. I didn't know what the man was talking about. For one phone call made seven months prior. But they, they got these niggas here for six months doing this. My name only appeared one time. One time. They got these niggas' names hundreds of mm. times recorded. Selling what they were selling, doing everything they claim I was. They got them in, in paperwork recorded. They're not going to write your fucking name down 278 times. That's the other rap right. nigga, Anthony Wayne. All right. Throw his honor to the moon. Colonel Clark. Put him on the moon. They're not going to write your name down 278 Over. times. Got you selling this shit hundreds of times, hundreds of phone calls that they made to each other. But these niggas never get locked up, never get charged, nothing. But the one, one phone call made to me, I had no clue what this nigga talking about when he called me. I get locked locked up, charged with everything. I want you to listen to this, bro. The man pleaded guilty to uh, the man that he right. was selling this shit to who called him first. They arrested this man April the nice. 5th, 2019. Think about this. I, I want everybody to put on their thinking caps. The one phone call was made to me January the 22nd, four months prior. They got the rat nigga Curl and Whims selling the shit to the man hundreds of times up, up until April the 5th when they clearly state, I'm going to read this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this, this man's plea agreement, what he agreed to, all right? What he agreed to. It's right here. Want everybody to see this. Attachment A, stipulation of facts, all right? I'm going to take some people to school, all right? The undersigned party stipulate and agree that if this case had proceeded to trial, this office would have proven the following facts beyond a reasonable doubt. People got to understand that the government has to convince you beyond doubt. a reasonable doubt. So in order for this man to sign this, see his signature right. that goddamn thing right there? They he signed it. I'm going to go back to these dates too, but let me point this out first. Beginning in at least 2018, and continuing through right. April the 3rd, 2019. Defendant Robert Jones was a narcotic distributor operating in Northwest Baltimore from January 2019. Remember, January 2019 is when the phone call was made to me, is what they claim. Through his arrest on April the 3rd, 2019, DEA intercepted Jones repeatedly arranging to obtain cutting agents from a a drug paraphernalia supplier. Okay? This man signed this shit. So he's agreeing that he's been, he arranged to buy a cutting agent from a drug paraphernalia supplier. Jones would then use those cutting agents to process heroin slash fentanyl, which means now if I'm selling this shit to you, I got a conspiracy charge now with your ass. Check it. On April the 5th, 2019, DEA agent Stop Jones after he obtained cutting agents from the drug paraphernalia supplier. Now, I never said that I was selling no fucking cutting agents, so who is it that's supposed to be this drug paraphernalia supplier? We're going to get back to that. 
Agents then search, I'm sorry, agents recovered cutting agents used for processing fentanyl from inside the house. Agents recovered over 900 Dang. grams of fentanyl, two loaded firearms, God and numerous dang. empty gel capsules. Jones agreed that he knowingly possessed the fentanyl firearms and gel capsules. He signed that. He signed that. So this man admitted that a drug paraphernalia supplier was selling him this shit to cut up his fentanyl, which means if they caught him with a brick in April, I'm pretty sure the way the feds operate is that, nigga, you sold two more bricks Correct. in January, February, and March. Right, that's how they do right. it, you fucking facts. Now, This the brother who was selling him the so-called cutting agents. Let me read so you his agreement. You got them all that much. I want you to keep in mind, this man copped the 10 years. He copped the 10 years. If I'm mistaken, this man copped the 10 years. I don't know who this man is. Never met this man. But he's a no rat. clue who he is, but they claim I was but, supplying. But he's a lying rat. Would you know that him. for a fact? I don't well, know what's up with this man Jones. I don't. He out, I just know he was not pointing the finger at anybody. I don't know. I don't have the supplemental plea agreement. By law, they no longer can put if you're a rat in your oh, fucking plea I, agreement statements of fact. They have to hide agree, it in the supplemental upon, plea yep. agreement by law. They passed okay. that in 2017. So we can't say That's that this law. one is a rat. We want to go past him. He bled out. Now, let me say this. The word on the street is, I guess, from some of his friends that he's a rat. I'm smelling. That's what too. I'm hearing. Because if I'm mistaken, I think this man is home. If you are home after getting caught with a brick of fentanyl, two guns, 90,000, something ain't right. This kid have a name. Kid, kid have a name. Right. Okay. His name okay. is Robert Jones. But I don't know for a fact what's going on with him. But let me tell you about the nigga who they put beside me. They put a brother right. beside me, all right? That supposed to agree to selling this shit to this man. Let me read what he said, all right? I'm not putting no words in nobody's mouth. Okay. I'm reading what these niggas signed, all right? So it's, it's not Sean saying, that he did this and did that. Give me one second. And give me one second. I just had it right here. Stop. I got a lot of paperwork. And, right I, there, brother. And this is what I love about it. Stop recycling. I love the fact go. that you took time out. Watch my channel. Pay attention. And this is a prime example. Individuals like this who is really involved in it. They get caught up. Get the slap on the wrist. And the government, government allows them to get right back in the crime and back out do what they want. The street. Like you. Listen Go to ahead. this, brother. Listen to this. You got to hear this one. You just heard this nigga right. got caught with a brick of fentanyl. He loaded guns, 90,000, right? This the dude who supposedly been working in the store and claiming he have to be claiming that he worked for me. That's the only reason why they could have locked me Who up. Who else to you to the lives? He must be claiming that he worked for me, knowing that they got him on wiretap Dang. with him and his boys. But listen, I'm going to read this. He signed this. I want you to yeah. see. He signed this. Same. Same thing. The underside party stipulate and agree that if this case had proceeded to trial, that this office would have proven the following beyond a reasonable doubt. From at least 2019, remember the phone right. call, 29 January 2019, through July the 17th is when he locked 21 of us up. The defendant, Ronald McCormick, participated in the Liberty and Garrison 
criminal enterprise operating in Northwest Baltimore. Members of the Liberty and Garrison Enterprise often refer to themselves as LNG, right? LNG is just an acronym. It's not some gangland play. It's Liberty Heights and Garrison, the community that we live in, the community that, you know, we've been in for a while. Liberty Heights and Garrison, LNG, it's an acronym. But anyway, carrying on. During this time period, members of LNG Enterprise distributed controlled substances on a daily basis, including heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, cocaine base, and marijuana. LNG members obtained these controlled substances from multiple suppliers within the organization and engaged in drug sales at an open drug shop in Northwest Baltimore. During the McCormick participation, in the criminal enterprise, McCormick would obtain distribution size cocaine base and heroin containing fentanyl from drug suppliers. McCormick would then, in turn, provide those narcotics to street level distributors to sell to Please. drug users. For, for example, all right, for example, on March the 29th, 2019, McCormick was traveling to a drug shop run by LNG members so that he could supply street level distributor with narcotics. A DEA investigator initiated a traffic stop of that vehicle. The investigators recovered from McCormick's bag multiple containers of cocaine base and heroin fentanyl. McCormick was also in possession of a large quantity of United States currency which was $10,000 that they gave him back. They gave you heard him $10,000 right? cash back. Restock After they took Brown. the drug. Go ahead, give, finish giving it to me, man. I'm going to read, I'm going to read that for you. It's in, it's in the court transcripts that I happen to have. I'll read it for you. Check it. McCormick also worked, here we go, also worked at a store located at 3300 Erdale Avenue, an area where LNG members frequent and sell narcotics. Just the same store they claim I owned. Check it. The store distributed narcotic paraphernalia and narcotic cutting agents to other drug distributors, including LNG members. McCormick regularly sold cutting agents and drug packaging, knowing that it would be used for drug distribution to other drug distributors. Over the course of McCormick's participation in this conspiracy, it was reasonably foreseeable to him that he and other members of the conspiracy distributed at least 280 grams of a mixture and a substance containing cocaine oh, base. My goodness gracious. I want you to put your thinking cap on, right? They said that he worked at that store selling this shit to the drug distributors. Did you hear them say anything about the nigga that got caught with the 900 no, grams not. of fat? No. It's not there. But they got it in the nigga plea agreement that yeah he was still purchasing no it from Russian him. Wife's not in here. Wife's not in here. The man only got forty two months. He pled. Hold up. He capped the ten years. All of a sudden, the judge take the two hundred and eighty grams back and turn it into 28 oh, grams and send it oh home with 42 now, months. This is what I got to say to the people. You see how they can give you and they'll give a rat of the... Hold, 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 brother. Let me say this before you, Go ahead. before you dive into that. You got niggas saying, man, that don't mean he a rat. My thing Speak is, on it, bro. is you, have, you have an individual who is caught red-handed red-handedly in, in the actual Red crime hand. with the actual drugs with the actual pistols to protect the drugs 
And you mean to tell me yep. they give him a slap on the wrist for the things that he has destroyed our community with. Here it is. He's claiming this rat is claiming, because I ain't going to nickname it. There's no other way around it. That don't mm -hmm. mean and what don't mean is evident and clear because nobody is going to come out with 42 months and be allowed to have a Look. 280 grams taken back with 28 grams. Only way is if you gave up information involving individuals that they truly want. The ones who have changed their lives around or never been involved in crime happen to be doing the right thing successful, but just don't have a problem with speaking to his neighborhood fellow men who have jobs, who are in the same community. And because you speak to these guys, because you accept the call from these individuals, they can throw you under the bus and make you a rat. But we don't see nobody say, not make you a rat, make you an individual that's caught up in this crime. But we don't see nobody in the comments. We don't see individuals saying that man had nothing to do with it. You know why? Everybody loves the dishonorable rat. Everybody caters to the rat. Everybody tries to figure out a way, how can we ruin an intelligent man from our community that clearly says to a phone call from individuals who are creating crimes, I don't know what the the hell you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is that you want, in other words, I don't want to deal with that, but I have the case for you. Case of sodas, case of bears, case of whatever the case may be that has nothing to do with crime. But because you pick up a telephone, you're the only one out of all these years that wasn't involved in these crimes that put you behind a black ball. Because you know why? The rat has a way out. And you were their way out. Although they didn't know that you wasn't a kid. They thought that you would plead out. They said, this, this brother, this mm -hmm. black man yep. who's very successful is going in the direction. He has a nice family. He's always shining like new money. We'd rather put him under the bus to save ourselves. And this is what I'd be like in the youngest to have an understanding. So this was perfect for me, not only for me to get into the community, to tell the youngest, listen, don't even socialize because that's what you're guilty of socializing. Brother, you can't speak to these mutts. Let me say this. Let me say this, brother. It's, it's all in the paperwork. It's, it's documented in fucking wiretaps. They said for this brother to give me a message. Now, I need niggas to think for a second. The brother got stopped twice, all right? He got stopped in February, and he got stopped in March, all right? The feds tried to throw a twist on it, feeling as though right. a nigga wasn't paying attention, all right? In court, they say he got stopped approximately in February by the DEA, all right? I want, actually, I want, I want no, to hey, hey, point listen, this out. Okay, I, I want you to get the point across, too. Because the way these lives are, are set up, like we, we're going to do this more. But the way these lives set up, right, it won't allow us to get everything. And I don't mm -hmm. want the government to get away with putting right. such an honorable young man. Because right. I consider you very, very fairly a young man. You're able to move around. This going to be real quick. Cable. This going to be real quick. But go right. ahead and get the point where we can go ahead. This pertains to ahead. that 10,000. This pertains to that 10,000. In fact, Approximately February this year, Mr. McCormick was intercepted on wires, engaged in a conversation with a co-conspirator in the organization. The DEA stopped Mr. McCormick, recovered multiple gel capsules of heroin and suspected crack cocaine that was packaged for sale, seized that from him, and in the course of that, observed, but did not seize it, however, approximately $10,000 of United States currency he was current. Following that conversation, Mr. McCormick spoke to other members of the organization, the law enforcement stop, and they discussed the stop and what it had to do with the basis of one of the things they discussed or how it had to do with Mr. Weston and how they had community complaints about Mr. Weston. Cutting agent business, the old pet variety store. Brother. 
This man knew I had nothing to do with that store. The three niggas that owned the store claimed to be my fucking friends knew I had nothing to do with that store and turned rat on me. They told this young man to give me a message. When the fuck do the fans start giving you messages telling you to stop driving your Bentleys in their face? It was never the fans who told him that it was Baltimore City Police that stopped him the second time all right Baltimore City Police was upset with me because a city council woman wanted me out the community brother I was going to run for city council everything I'm saying is documented proof there to show you I announced on all my social media pages I was exploring to run for the seventh district seat for Baltimore City Council. I was opening up my restaurant lounge. It was a community center catering hall. This woman came out in total opposition of me not opening up that community center. So I decided to say, fuck it, I'm gonna turn it into a restaurant bar lounge, which it is already zoned for, and I don't have to go be for nobody. That's when she put the police on my ass. And the police grabbed this man thinking he had something to do with me but the feds told him that that's our fish let him go that was a catch and release all right well, keep the drugs get him back the money there. send him back out the door let's stop there OG. the they reason why we're going to stop there because this is not going to stop here tomorrow okay. me and you're going to get together we're going to go a lot more deeper we're going to bring it all the way out i want to make sure always okay. i always got to make sure it is to keep your safety in play, not with the street nonsense, but with the with the government. You have always came to exactly. me. Exactly. That's, 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 that's who worries me. Nick, I ain't worried about the rat. No, listen. I ain't worried about the listen rat. To, listen to me. I'm worried about the Your safety and your freedom is number one when you come to my platform. And I need everybody when they come to my platform to understand that. I have to be in concerns of making the world understand that you never came to me in harms of harming anyone. You came to me with the community Correct. understanding of what, look what I could have been so quickly, but look how they took it away based off of nonsense and negativity that I'm not involved in. And I think tonight, my audience, all, my buddy. people will always say clearly, this is a stand up man here who is being really killed and lied on based off the of rats who want to yep. save their own rear end who actually got caught up yep. in actual crime so we'll be cool. back tomorrow cool. to continue to stop recycling crime i appreciate you and i advise you this you're going to get calls you're going to get people who's going to try to get you mm -hmm. caught up in negative conversations right the same right. way you didn't have any conversation with them about their negativity. You let them talk their negativity and you hang up because we got something positive happening. We're going to go at the city council tomorrow. We're going to let the world know what true honor is coming from a solid man by the name of Sean Weston. I'm King Aaron from the Honor Your Life campaign. I salute you, OG. Tomorrow, we will be in contact. Stay upon what you upon, and I guarantee you, you're going to spank out, all right? Be calling you. Appreciate it, brother. Peace, my brother. Thank you, brother.